Welcome to this balance tutorial on framing your online workout. My name is Tyler Valencia. I'm the president of Kips and Time to Train Fitness and your balance ambassador. Let's kick this off with who is this video for? If you're filming online workouts or if you're creating an on-demand library or even streaming, this is a video for you. Building and knowing your indoor space for where you're filming workouts, knowing where the frame is, all these kind of things are important for creating the professional look of your workout. One of the things and the biggest tip that we're gonna kick this off with is what's behind the camera, what's on the sides, nobody knows. Nobody's gonna know if you have mixers or if you have couches or if you have your whole house behind the video it doesn't matter. What matters is what's inside the frame. So keep that in mind as you're maybe going around your house and you're trying to identify a space that you can consistently film. It doesn't have to be big. It doesn't have to be a big grand space. And really, all you need is about 9 to 12 feet. That can transform into your consistent professional filming space for streaming, for on-demand workouts, or if you're creating content, if you're creating content for your social media channel. A quick disclaimer before we get into the next tips. These preferences, they're my preferences based off of my experiences with creating online workouts, editing online workouts, seeing a variety of online workouts that are out there on YouTube or even what people post. These are my preferences. They might change, they might adapt, they might grow, and your own preferences, you'll probably build those as you go through this journey of creating online workouts and those become part of your brand, how it looks, all that kind of stuff. My hope is that you watch this video and it provides some type of benefit that you can maybe think, oh, it doesn't matter what's on the sides. Oh, I actually understand better what he's talking about with framing and all those items. So keep that in mind. And if you have any, please feel free to drop them in the comments. If you have another one in here that you're like, wow, this could actually help somebody that's watching this, put it in the comments and help out fellow fitness pros going through the same online workout journey. The first one we're gonna talk about is what type of workout are you filming? That's really gonna dictate your frame. So what's inside the camera? If you're filming a HIIT workout, you're filming a cycling workout, a yoga session, a bar workout, these are all things that are gonna change the frame because you might need to have more space to be able to showcase lateral skaters or you might need more space to do your shoulder presses. These things will really dictate your framing and what's inside of the camera. So first know what workout and how you wanna frame it. Let's compare two right now. Indoor cycling versus a HIIT strength training workout. With indoor cycling, I'm gonna give you a little in insight into what I generally tell instructors is that sacrifice a little space on the bottom. People know what's going on with your feet. They're going around in a circle. So is that really important in the camera? In my opinion, no. So move the bottom of that frame up and bring the camera closer to you so they could see you. These days, cameras, the megapixels on them, the clarity on them, they're fantastic. Even if you're using an iPhone, an iPad, or even Android phones, uh, the clarity on them is fantastic. So bring that camera closer and sacrifice some of the things that really, with imagination, you know that your feet are going around on your bike. So that's my tip with indoor cycling with the framing on it, but Let's now compare that to a HIIT or a strength training workout where you need more space. You need to be able to know where my sides are and where can I stay in frame. So that's really gonna change the look of it, how you framed it and how you moved the camera. Keep those in, in mind with when you're looking at a space or if you're trying to frame your workout. How big is it and how can I change it depending on what workout I'm trying to film. The next one we're gonna go over is know your frame. And I've already kind of talked about your frame, your sides and whatnot, but knowing your frame and how big a space you have is crucial for setting yourself up for success with it. So what, what am I talking about when I'm saying frame? So if I know the sides of my frame, where is it? Where's the side 
on each side of the camera in frame, on the top, the bottom, all these things, knowing these items is really important so that you know that you stay in frame of the camera, that you're not going out. Or you can use that to your advantage. Are there some workouts where moving closer to the camera and being able to talk with the camera is gonna be beneficial? So keep that in mind too, that you don't necessarily have to just stay within frame. But let's go over a tip now for a bottom frame. So the bottom of the frame of the camera, where is that? And what you can use to your advantage with filming in your own space is that maybe you wanna put a yoga mat at the bottom of your feet, that if I go to that yoga mat and it's right here, that that's the tippy, tippy, tippy point of where my toes can't go past. And that could be useful if you're doing groundwork, if you're doing push-ups, if you're doing planks, some type of work where people need to see everything in it. And if you go out, that it's not gonna be in, in frame, or it's not gonna be in the shot. So keep that in mind, that you can put stuff on the ground in front of the camera to your advantage. Put your notes, put a marker, things that let you know where you are and what you can get away with with your shot. Keep those in mind as you move forward with how big it is. Top, bottom, sides, that's your frame. And those will go back to the, the first one that we talked about with what's behind the camera, nobody knows. The next one we're gonna talk about is where is your lighting source coming from? Where is the natural lighting? Because this could really make or break or be a hassle for you if you do have windows in your shot or around that you can't control the lighting coming in. If you're filming in a room where there's lights behind you, try to cover them up. The reason being is that you wanna be able to control the lighting, the temperature, how it looks. Natural light, while it can be useful sometimes, it is something that's not consistent depending on the day, the season, if you have seasons, those can really change and fluctuate. Now, if you can board them up or if you can close your blinds, make sure that not much of it is coming through and all you have is your artificial lights, you control it and it's consistent. It's a consistent look that's part of your branding of your online work that people will know the quality of it. Another tip I'm gonna throw in here with lighting is that if you have one coming from behind you, Try to flip it around because what you don't want is that natural light coming into the camera. If you've probably seen a shot, a photo, or a video of someone that has some light behind them, they look all dark because that light is going right into the lens and it's closing it up. So it's making the camera work harder it was against you. So keep that in mind that, okay, this spot might not be good, or I might need to close these windows, close these shades to make sure that you can control the lighting within your space. So let's summarize all the items we went through and connect them all for your framing, knowing how to frame your workout and how they all connect. The first one we talked about was what people don't know is what's on the sides or behind the camera. You could have mixers, you could have lights, you have all kinds of notes to help you with your online workout behind and people will never see them. Use that to your advantage, which goes into knowing what type of format. What type of format are you filming? Is it a hit, cycling workout? And then use that to your advantage with all those different placements and all that kind of stuff that goes into what you're putting behind, what you're building up with it so that all your preparation that you're doing and then transition that into knowing your frames. Where are my sides up and down in front of me and what type of workout? Those all connect together. And then lastly, we have your lighting. How is the lighting coming in? Is it artificial? Is it natural light? And that will also dictate how much space you have with it. So that's been this tutorial on framing your online workouts. I hope it's been helpful. My name's Tyler Valencia. If you've taken a chance to go look at our other tutorials on YouTube, we got some great stuff with putting together an audio interface, with lighting, things that'll help you out with building your online workouts, your social media content, and making your fitness business look professional. We also have episodes of the podcast on there to check out. Until the next time, my name is Tyler Valencia, and I'll see you in the next one.